Hi, you're watching Analog Output, and I'm Rich Holmes, and I have a stick. This is a piece of poplar that I bought at some point at Home Depot. It's been lying around. I'm not sure what I even bought it for in the first place, but I'm using it for this project. I applied a couple of coats of cherry stain. a couple of coats of polyurethane finish. Then I took it out to the garage and put it on the drill press and used a Forstner bit to make a little channel in one end of the stick. So the drill press was set up to leave a little bit of wood at the bottom, with a more or less flat bottom channel drilled out here. Next step is to prepare the soft pot and mount it to the stick. Okay. Got three pieces of stranded wire. Let's start by tuning these in. Okay, now it's time for the soft pot. And I gotta treat this carefully. It is fairly fragile. And I certainly don't want to put my soldering iron on the middle of it. But we got solder tabs on one end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting some solder onto these solder tabs. And then solder down these.
Okay. And incidentally, it's about 21.3k ohms from one end to the other. All right. Now, the back of this thing says 3M. This is adhesive. And I'm going to stick it down onto this thing here. Now, it's going to go on here. I'm going to have that end about there. And I'm just going to put these stickers here to help me in lining up because I don't want to be putting this thing down and decide it's crooked and then try to peel it back up again because that's just not going to be a good situation at all. So we'll use those to line things up and there it is. All right. that. All right. That's going to go down there. That's going to go there. And that's going to be called good. And it's actually not lined up as well as I had intended to, but it's close enough. Okay. It's a little off center on that end. What can you do? I'm not peeling it up. All right. Now I've got a circuit board here, a perf board, and I'm going to solder down a stereo three and a half millimeter jack. Now, as a temporary thing, this whole thing's a temporary thing. I mean, the, the whole circuit board here is going to be replaced eventually. This is just for setting up for testing. And I'm going to tape it in place. doing this because I don't have final hardware yet. So I'm just using this. And there it is. 
That's the ribbon controller itself. Okay, I've got things connected up now. You can see I've also made myself a perf board uh, mounting for the uh, output jacks. So they'll be a little more stable. There's a, um, a three pin header back here plugged into the uh, into the proto board. And um, as things connected up here, I found I actually made uh, an error in wiring up this uh, this jack earlier. So I corrected that error. Now, I said before in a previous video that I uh, thought I was going to need to get a different USB to serial interface. Um, but then I figured out um, either remembered or realized for the first time or whatever. I'm not sure what happened, but uh, I had been using this one. And this one has um, female headers uh, connected right onto the board there so that the, uh, well, the, the outputs of this thing, uh, the pins here are in the same order as the inputs on that thing. So you just have to plug the one into the other and it's all connected up properly. This one, the outputs are not in the same order. And in fact, there's one of the outputs that actually comes from the side rather than from the end. Um, so to connect this up, I've got male headers here and I use these jumpers to connect them and they're in, and they're, they're in a scrambled order from one to the other. But this, um, this interface runs on 3.3 volts internally but of course it gets 5 volts from the USB and it actually sends that 5 volts to a pin so we can take the 5 volt output from that pin and put it into the 5 volt input here and so then this board is running on 5 volts so we've got a we've got our 5 volt circuit running here interfaced through the 3.3 volt interface so i can do serial IO and I can look at uh, debug outputs from this thing while I'm actually running at 5 volts. If all that is confusing to you, it was confusing to me too, but anyway the point is I can run it at 5 volts and look at the debug outputs. So what happens with the debug outputs? Well, let's look over here on the screen. Okay, so here's the Arduino editor, and on the left is the output from the debugs. And if I put my finger down near one end, it responds. And it says the note is on until I take my finger off, and then it says the note is off. It says pitch is 235. That's the value that it's sending to the... Uh, to the DAC for the pitch. It says trig, trig equals 4095. That just means it's saying the, the gate is on or trig equals zero in the last line, the gate is off. If I put my finger in the middle, it's similar, but now the pitch is 2197 or something like that. Finger near the other end, you get pitches 3797. If I just swipe my finger down from one end to the other, you've got high values which decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease and decrease until I get down to the bottom end. And there's zero. So it's doing what it should be doing. Or at least it says it's doing what it should be doing. But I do have cables plugged in and I have stuck a voltmeter on the cables and it's uh, putting out the voltages I expect on the cables. So what happens? if this gets connected to the synthesizer. Okay, so there it is connected up. We've got uh, the hacked USB cable providing power now. We've got the gate output going to the gate input here, the control voltage output going to the uh, one volt per octave for the VCO over there. And what happens if we start playing with the ribbon? Here's the ribbon.
So the next step is to take it off the protoboard and make it permanent. Watch for that. Subscribe, you'll find out about it. Like it if you like it, and see you next time.